please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. No, no, that, that's exactly the point that I was making, that an EOI was not binding in any form or fashion. So why is it that people even chose to stay away uh, from putting in an EOI? Uh, but, you know, you said that you don't want to speculate on what seems to have done the Air India disinvestment in. Uh, you talked about challenging industry concerns. Yes, oil prices are a concern, but, sir, let's be clear. Anybody who is getting into the aviation business knows that oil price volatility is going to be something that they have to deal with. On the plus side, I mean, if you're talking about India being the third largest aviation market, uh, you know, by 2020 and so on and so forth. Uh, surely that would have uh, got somebody to put in an EOI. Now, the reason I ask you this is because our feedback right through this process has been uh, that the government retaining 24% was a deal breaker. And I'll tell you why. Uh, because look at companies like Hindustan Zinc and Balco. These were divested in the first tenure of the NDA government. And the government continues to hold on to the residual stake that they hold in these companies. And that is why potential bidders were wary of the government wanting to hold on to 24%. Shireen, there are many other instances that would argue exactly the opposite. For instance, if you look at the holdings that we have in some banks like Axis and ICICI, government has of course continued its passive financial stake. It has not interfered in any operational way with those companies. If you look at Maruti, for instance, where government had a stake for a long period of time, uh, you know, eventually government did exit from those. So obviously there are arguments to be made on both sides. At the end of the day, as far as the offer for sale, what we had put up in terms of terms and conditions mm. uh, for the sale are concerned, I think they were very balanced. Uh, they were, uh, you know, I think uh, taking into account all the various different stakeholder interests that we had to consider. And therefore, uh, you know, our objective of ensuring that uh, uh, Indians had an independent, globally competitive uh, airline which could fly long haul around the world, those, those uh, being our overriding objectives were fully maintained through this very balanced uh, offer for sale that we had put out. Mm -hmm. uh, what now, uh, Mr. Sinha, as far as Air India is concerned, uh, is, are you going to attempt to take the disinvestment process forward uh, at this point? Will you rework uh, the terms that have been put in place in the EOI or is the divestment off uh, the table altogether for now? And my second question, and I'll ask you this in the context of what we're already seeing with LIC uh, potentially getting ownership of IDBI Bank, there have been reports suggesting that LIC could even be brought into Air India. Is that a realistic possibility? Again, uh, Shireen, I cannot speculate to the future. You understand the decision-making process that has been established within government for these kinds of situations. We have an executive committee of joint secretaries. We have a core group on disinvestment, which is chaired by the cabinet secretary. Then we have a very senior group of ministers, which is the Air India uh, specific uh, alternative mechanism that monitors the situation and then takes decisions. So we have multiple decision layers. We will be monitoring the situation uh, as we move forward. And whatever is in the best national interest, you can be sure uh, that you know all of these very accomplished and capable professionals and senior decision makers will make uh, whatever is in, uh, in the right uh, national interest and take that forward.